Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. She was young. She was most likely poorish. <laughs> she was scared. She was disappointed. She was pregnant, out of wedlock. She was a girl who thought her life was going to be just like her mother's, her grandmother's, her friends, and all the women she knew in her hometown of Nazareth. She would mature into a full-blown woman. Her father would make for her a good marriage match. She would live with her husband and have his children. She would fulfill her wifely duties without complaint. She would raise the young ones and teach them how to behave properly in social and religious settings. She would fix the meals. She would clean their dwelling. She would take care of the domestic animals. She would tend the garden, bake the bread, and do everything she could to make her husband happy. And most of all, she would be an exemplary role model for other women of what it was to be a righteous wife, an example that would bring her husband much respect in the surrounding community. And so can you imagine what it was like for Mary to have all these expectations, all of her life plans come crashing down around her? Everything she had imagined for her life was gone. Joseph wouldn't marry her now. In fact, he may turn her over to the authorities who were within the law to stone her to death for being pregnant out of wedlock. She would have this one child, but probably no others. And how in the world was she going to support this one child as a single teenage girl? The reality is, if she wasn't stoned to death, she was most likely going to be disowned by her family, lose a roof over her head, and be ostracized from the whole community. Was she going to be like Hagar, driven into the wilderness for her and her child to die? These are some of the things that could have been going through Mary's mind. Now, as we reflect on the gospel for today, we see that even in the midst of so many negative thoughts and emotions, Mary proclaims the ultimate testimony of faith. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And her unconditional faith was not misplaced. Joseph, with God's guidance, marries Mary, saving her from public disgrace. And then she visits a built-in ally, her relative Elizabeth, who has defied the gossip of the community, and probably little busy bee women, <laughs> because she was presumed barren uh, in also giving birth to a child. Now, I want you to try to use your imagination here. In the hill country, there is a place called Ein Karim, south of Jerusalem. It is presumed by many scholars to be the home of Elizabeth and where she and Mary greeted each other. And by the way, Mary had to travel about 100 miles, 2,400 or so above sea level by donkey, most likely, to get to Ein Karim from Nazareth. So this was a very dangerous and difficult trip for anyone, let alone a pregnant woman. To visit this place, where it is presumed Mary and Elizabeth met, uh, you must go up a high hill to the Church of the Visitation. It is a church dedicated to Mary and Elizabeth. And in the courtyard surrounding it, you can read the Magnificat, which Anne Levesque beautifully cantered today. And set in this courtyard, uh, in ceramic tiles. The Magnificat is in 57 languages, from Scottish to Swahili and Portuguese to Vietnamese. It's a gorgeous place. And in a prominent place in the courtyard is a really, really moving statue, a statue of the greeting between Mary and Elizabeth where they are embracing and their bellies are touching each other. And on their faces is a look of joy. 
Well, how does Mary's story speak to us today? One of my seminary professors taught us that the best way to interpret Bible stories is to insert ourselves into the biblical narrative. When we do this, how does Mary's story speak to you and me? Right here, right now, in our day and time. Well, how many of us have had our lives all planned out like Mary, only to have our hopes, dreams, and expectations dashed and crashed down around us? How many of us have experienced in our lives fear? Fear that we will be rejected, ostracized from our families, friends, and communities for whatever reason. How many of us have, experiencing, have experienced and are experiencing the myriad of conflicting emotions as we watch our country and our world spin out of control? As we watch our fragile democracy upon which our country is built in danger of being overturned? How many of us live with a sense of anxiety and dread of what may be if this happens, especially to the rights and freedoms of the most vulnerable. Women, refugees, LGBT people, children of migrants who were uh, born in this country, but then there are those who have adopted children from other countries, and there's no guarantee that they will not be affected by this. Indeed, all of us here today can identify with Mary in some way and step into her shoes. Dreams dashed, fear of rejection and disgrace, anxiety and dread over the future, loss of safety and loss of human rights. And yet, God reminds us that we need not be afraid, for the Lord is with us, and blessed are we. God's joy will, yes, at some point be in us complete. Some years ago, I wrote a poem about Mary, um, and I'd like to close by sharing this poem with you. It is entitled, Mary's Choice. Through sweat and fear, with wide-eyed awe, you whispered the words which sealed your fate. O Mother of God, did you know your choice would save the world? I wonder how you felt when the angel left and you were all alone to ponder the mystery of the pact you had made to bear the light that would dispel our darkness. Young girl, you were naive and fresh, your life ahead of you, so many hopes and dreams of a normal life, husband and children. One yes, though, changed all this, and your heart pierced would never be the same. Your choice, O oh Mary, courage filled in the calm of that night, when angels' wings embraced you and the Spirit's power filled your being, birthed a new creation. The earth can rejoice because of you. <laughs>